Hey, welcome to TMP, the Mav Pod. My name is Bo. You can find me on Twitter X at Mavs Highlights, doing only and just the Mavsiest of all Mavsy things. Is this what winning feels like? It was just what three weeks ago we were in a seven-game winning streak, and uh, and then the floor seemed to fall out from underneath us. But this is back to winning ways, and it's funny enough that it coincides with playing some. Uh, weaker opponents but also i think it's a sign that the team is figuring some things out and uh, man did they figure some things out tonight they didn't fig- figure out the three-point line no 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 they shot 22 percent tonight from three six of 27 this is a good three-point shooting team on most nights if we shoot 22 percent from three that's an l friends we are taking a loss that night but we just so happen to be playing the Golden State Warriors on a night where Steph Curry was not playing, where Clay Thompson might as well not have been playing, and Draymond Green wasn't playing either. Uh, and so we just kind of had them outgunned tonight. Let me just run down a few of the fun stats right off the bat from the field. Even with shooting 22% from three, we still shot better, almost 50 four percent from the field I, I should have done the math on this how awesome must we have shot from two tonight to shoot almost 54 percent from the field while also shooting 22 percent on 27 three-point attempts like that's insane they were scorching scorching um and, and which here's another stat that just kind of points to that points in the paint tonight 68 points in the paint for the Mavs to only 48 for the dubs 48 still feels kind of a lot but not compared to 68. Got him on the the 20 spot there. Um, Turnovers was kind of even. It was roughly a push, 15 to 16. Mavs still a little sloppy with the ball. Um, Both had 19 free throws. And uh, Mavs out-assisted the Warriors, which is always nice, 30 to 19. Mavs tied the Warriors in rebounds uh, at 42. Um, And, man, just a, a fun night where you felt... Like the good guys were going to win it. You know, it's not very often that when we're talking about a Mavs win that we don't start with talking with uh, one 25-year-old Slovenian gent. But tonight, we're going to start with Mr. I Can't Miss the Dang Ball, Daniel Gafford. Now, his stats uh, just from the box aren't insane. You know, 10 points, 6 rebounds uh, in 26 minutes. That's not incredible. But then you look at 7 blocks and you're like, oh, oh, oh. Seven blocks. Heck yes. And then when you realize he is up to 33. That's 3-3. Three, three. That's Pippen. He's up to 33 straight made field goals. Consecutive shots without a miss. 33. It's tied. Or no, he holds the second longest streak in recorded NBA history. Uh, 35 being attributed to Wilt back in the 60s. Who knows if those are real, but... That's the record anyway. So two more ties you with the stilt. That would be pretty incredible. I, honestly, that, that record is so important that I would I would just encourage. I, I know this is crazy because it's a team sport and it's all about winning the game. I kind of want him not to take any shots unless they are the easiest dunks in the world until you get him to 35 or 36. Like just just say, hey, Gaff, I, I, if I was kid, I would kind of go to him and go, man, this is history. We're going to get you the easiest looks. And if you're at all hesitant, pass out. You might be going, no, that's not winning thinking. And and I kind of go, yeah, I know that's really not winning thinking, but this record would be so incredible for a guy like Gafford to hold. Think about that. It's me, then (laughs) Wilt. No, that's that's crazy stuff. This will be the only time in Daniel Gafford's NBA career that he'll ever have a chance at a record like this. Just, just let him get it right. Am I crazy? I, I just let him get it. He's five for five tonight. Um, l- let him get this record, guys. It's so cool. Uh, and the fact that he's doing it while blocking a ton of shots and, you know, being active. He's not a very good defensive player outside of the shot blocking, which he's he's really solid at. Um, but, man, it's just a fun ride, this 33 straight bucket. So good on you, landlord. Keep it going for at least let, – let's, let's be greedy and ask for at least three more makes consecutive, bud. Let's do it. You can do it. Come on, make some history. Uh, also, Kyrie had a kind of a bounce back game tonight, shot uh, eight for 16 from the field in 34 minutes, put up 23 points, eight rebounds, 10 assists, really nice game. Not the insane game that I've been predicting for a minute now, um, 
but really, really good, especially on a night where Luka couldn't shoot for anything. Kyrie steps up, puts up the 23 spot, but also grabs the eight rebounds and dishes out the 10 assists uh, on only one turnover. So that's a really nice night for Kyrie. It looks like Luka's going to miss tomorrow night's game against the Thunder. He had some hamstring tightness and left the game in the third or fourth quarter and never never to return. So he's probably going to miss tomorrow night's game. Uh, hopefully, hopefully, just as a precaution, right? Hopefully, just as a precaution. He only played 29 minutes tonight, 21 points, three rebounds, nine assists, um, six really sloppy turnovers. He, he just was not looking good and was seven of 18 from the field, only one of six from three. And this is the second game back to back where his shot has really, really failed him. So hopefully it's just been this hamstring maybe nagging him a little bit and he just needs the rest, right? Let's give him three nights off uh, or two or three, whatever it would be, and uh, let him rest that up and hopefully he'll he'll regain that uh, that fiery shot also man i just want to i know i'm biased but like d live man it's all about the kid to me i know what gafford's doing deserves all the hype in the world um and they they tonight what what did they what did they combine for they combined for 22 points uh nine blocks 14 rebounds i'm doing the math right now in my head uh and just and on what five for five and uh yeah so 11 for 13 from the field. <laughs> like, it's just bonkers. True shooting percentage of 75% for D-Live. And Gafford's like, yeah, punk, 100% true shooting. <laughs> like, I'm over here not missing a thing ever. Uh, and, man, I just love D-Live. I think D-Live is the vastly, vastly superior defensive player. Um, not as good a shot blocker just yet as D-Live. He'll be a better one probably in the long run. I'd love to see him get the minutes to grind on those rebounds. He got eight tonight, which is good. He's been having a very low number rebound counts. And so you can see him get the 12 points, the eight rebounds, the two blocks in just 19 minutes. That's a good, really, really nice performance. He's been shining in the in the backup role. I didn't want Gafford to take his spot, but I mean, the proof is in the pudding, right? You can't really argue with this kind of success. Um, Luca is going to make either one of those centers absolutely shine. And um, I think D-Live is okay right now coming off the bench. Next season, I think he'll just be so much better than Gafford. It will be unthinkable for him to come off the bench. Um, I just think next year he's going to be a dominant defensive player. I think he's already an extremely impactful defensive presence. Uh, but I think next year is where we we start hearing him like, is he going to be on one of the defensive teams? Like, I, I, If not next year, then the season after, that's going to be the conversation. He's just too good defensively and i love it i'm just so so thankful like genuinely thankful to have d live on our team pj washington has been just quietly putting along and i think playing very solid defense nothing like lockdown nothing insane nothing crazy but just solid uh washington was a plus 28 tonight from the from from uh, uh plus minus which i know you know whatever you want to talk about that stat a plus 28 that means when he was on the floor the mavs were rolling the warriors 34 minutes tonight 11.7 Seven rebounds, two steals, three blocks from PJ. So PJ was in action tonight. Five for 11 from the field. Only one of six from three. Mm. I want one of these nights where he just gives us like a four for six or a, a, a five for nine or something like that. Just where he's hot. He's hot, man. I, I want to see it because he's playing so well in other areas of the field uh, and other areas of the floor. Just that, that quarter three is not his shot. And um, his three-point overall has been pretty weak. Dante Exum just continues to just shine. Not doing the flashy stuff, but just getting out there in 24 minutes, nine points, two rebounds, six assists, only one turnover, uh, three or four from the field. Just just good. Just a good basketball player. Isn't it nice to have just good basketball players on this roster? Uh, and Josh even had a good night tonight. Um 11 points, five rebounds. The team struggled a little bit when he was out there. Um, you know, the, the Mavs won tonight by 10, and Josh was still a, a negative eight, which is whatever. He shot five or six from the field, one or two from three. I think he was still a really positive presence out there. And it seems to me, I, I've heard other people say this, but I've been slow to say it. It seems to me that Josh really thrives when Lucas sits. Like, there's just something about... Luca's ball dominating ways that I think stifles green, right? I just think green needs the ball moving so that he can keep moving so that he's always moving. Um, 
And so I, I, th- I think Josh, you know, had a, had a nice game tonight. And then there's uh, Timmy, 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 who, who tonight uh, gave us five points, no rebounds, two assists, one really terrible turnover, which is kind of the groaning play of the night where he waves off Kyrie, waves him off multiple times. Like Kyrie comes up for the ball and, and Tim has uh, the rookie pod on him and he's waving <laughs> he's waving Kyrie off. So he's got the ball in one hand, right? He's, with one hand, he's waving. And with the other hand, he's holding the ball. And that rookie, um, he just steals it from him. He just steals it from him and just goes down. And I think uh, D-Live had an awesome block off of that play um, on, the, on the break there. But you're just like, come on, Hardaway. Two for seven from the field. One of five from three, which immediately means he's not helping you at all. Um, my gosh, man. I just... I'm so happy to see his minutes being pulled down. And, and I want to let's let's golf clap. Let's golf clap Coach Kid with uh, having the, the guts to finally say, hey, he's saying the right things to the press, right? We we're going to have to have Tim Hardaway to win and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, actions speak louder than words. And he has cut Hardaway's minutes in half. He, he used to play in the high 20s, low 30s for the majority of the season. Now, over these last games, he's been pulled down. Tonight, he only played 14 minutes. And, uh, and the Mavs are just better when he's on the bench. Like, when he's on the floor, things stifle, things get, get you know, sloggy. Uh, it just, the ball doesn't move. It sticks in his hands. He's not a, a NBA quality passer, defender, rebounder, um, facilitator. Like he's dribbler. Like, he, all he is is a catch and shoot three point shooter. And, and anything beyond that is just, you're just pie in the sky dreaming. And if he's not giving you that, he needs to sit. And it seems like Kid has finally come to that conclusion, as, as I think the rest of us did a long time ago. If you were kind of like me, years and years ago. I've been on this train for four and a half years, and I am not a fan of his game. I just I think he's probably a really nice guy, probably a good citizen, probably a good, fun teammate. But, uh, man, not what I'm looking for in a basketball player. And so let's not dwell on that any longer. Man, it was nice. Nice to have a fun win. The game was fun tonight, too. Uh, even when it was a little closer than, than we would have liked, it was still fun. And, uh, and so the Mavs pull away there in the second half. Kyrie led the guys. Uh, Gafford's the story right now, which is totally fine. Uh, I love watching D-Live. I love watching him on defense. He's, he's the kind of defender that I'm just constantly going, like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Uh, I, I, he just he, he turns you away. Like, you want to come into the paint? You're not going to. You're not going to. Uh, I also, let me see. I don't think he had any fouls either tonight, D-Live. Let me see. Yeah, no fouls in 19 minutes for the rookie. Two blocks, no fouls, eight rebounds. Heck yeah. Good job, Rook. Uh, so four straight wins for our beloved Mavericks. Uh, if you're excited like I am, I think you deserve it, right? Like four wins feels good. Four wins feels like a great thing. Oh, yeah, and the, the Pelicans lost tonight. So that's that's nice. Uh, the Kings and the Lakers are playing right now. I think we want the Kings to lose. But they're they're kind of they basically have the same record and they're they're both just kind of right around us. So I think we want the Kings to lose, but uh, you know I definitely don't want to see Braun um, in AD. No, that doesn't sound fun to me at all. All right, man, y'all have a good one. Go Mavs.